huh? We'll soon find out. So what now? You take a vote, right? I believe the first order of business is to select a foreman. Why? Who wants her to talk about? You guy did it, right? I mean, it's obvious. Well, it may not be obvious to everybody, honey. We need to pick a four-person to manage things. It's required. I nominate you. Mm -hmm. It's cool with me. I'm happy to do it, but does anybody else want to be considered? I'd like to know your qualifications, if you don't mind. <sighs> OK. I'm Lorraine Lewis, executive vice president at First Commonwealth Bank. I'm married with two teenage children. Works for me. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Yeah. Opposed? All right. I'll do the best that I can. Seems like the best way to get started is to do a straw poll. You know, go around the room, see where everybody stands. Guilty, not guilty. We can do it by secret ballot. Why bother? Gotta talk about it anyway, right? Any objections? Hmm? All right. Um, I vote guilty. 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 Very guilty. 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 I'm not sure. Oh, I knew it. Please, everybody gets a chance to speak. I'm sorry, I don't know your name. I'm, I'm Sylvia, Sylvia Green. You're undecided, Sylvia? Yes, ma'am. How can you be undecided? It's open and shut. I ain't saying that he didn't do it. I ain't saying that he did it either, though. OK, we've got nine guilty, one undecided. I'm with her. I have questions. I don't believe this. We're going to be here all day. You have somewhere to go, young man? Yes, I do. As a matter of fact, I have basketball tickets tonight. <laughs> Very important. <laughs> Let's move on. Nine to convict, two undecided, and you, sir, at the window? I vote not guilty. Interrogation one. Come on. Oh, to the right. Oh, to the left. Have a seat. Tilt your head back. Pinch right here. It's good. Uh, you okay? Task force. I know, yes. Is this what you signed on for, right? Yeah, I just didn't think I'd get a chance while I was in Richmond. Small world. Small, scary world. Hey, Glenn, what's up? Good morning. I already talked to the Attorney General twice. This is going to be huge. Don't be greedy, Gwen. Do you know this guy's uh, Jack Ross, CIA? Paige Van Doren. Uh, okay, everyone. Let's get started. The director is with the president right now. He's asked me to advise him if we should raise the alert level. I told him to wait. He said he wants an answer today. We got a call yesterday from our friends in immigration who want our assistance for an out-of-status call on a Yemeni national, a student, Mohammed Khalid al-Yemeni. We arrived at al-Yemenis this morning. INS asked for his visa. 
He says it's inside. We ask where inside. He takes off through the house, exits out back. We get pursuit and cuff him. When we take him inside to get his shoes, we see in plain view posters of Osama bin Laden and other militant Islamic leaders. There's also a flyer on the wall with quotes like, when you meet the unbelievers in jihad, chop off their heads. That's from the Quran. Extremists use it as a way to call for jihad. Pocket litter in his jeans included a billfold with a photograph. We had it enlarged. This is our guy with an AK-47. Where was it taken? We don't know. Could be Afghanistan, could be Arizona. We looking at a lone wolf or part of a sleeper cell? We're not looking at anything yet except a guy with an expired visa. We need answers, people. Is this guy a terrorist or just some nut who likes to dress up for Halloween? U.S. Attorney Gwynn. We need warrants for our Yemeni's residents, bank records, phone records. Already in work. Locals, yes, sir. running for wants and warrants. DMV, criminal history, yeah. full workup. INS, our Yemeni's entry packet. How did he come in? Where did he stay? Uh, get his school records. Let's make sure he's out of status. Right. State, a copy of his visa. Where he applied, how he applied, who sponsored him. Photographs, passports. Agency, please run full traces, common spellings, variations, whatever your analysts can think of. This is the name we got. This is his DOB. Defense Department. Has he applied as a linguist? Any interest at all in the military? Why, you think he was trying to penetrate us? We don't know. We're just asking. Look, we got a 48-hour hold right now. Let's get moving. I can help on this. You're off the case for good reasons, Van Doren. The Bureau does not want agents on personal missions. It clouds judgment and leads to bad decisions, like your decision to be in this office right now. I understand your feelings, and I'm sorry, but you know better. Yes, ma'am. Not guilty. Uh, were you watching the same trial I was? I'm not convinced beyond a reasonable doubt. Come on, the guy's an animal. You just can't wait to put this black boy away, can you? Oh, look, hey, I am not prejudiced, all right? Oh. No, I'm a fireman, all right? I work with all types, but the evidence is the evidence. I agree. Color has nothing to do with this. The facts speak for themselves. Do they? In my experience, lawyers can make facts say anything they want. I have some experience with lawyers myself, and I think the prosecution did an excellent job making his case. Here, here. Provided motive, means, opportunity. What more do you want? Williams didn't even take the stand. The judge said we're not supposed to let that influence us. Right, that's right. Still, you got to ask yourself, why didn't he say anything? Because he's guilty. What could he say except to lie? You mean to repeat what he told the cops, that he didn't know how the gun got in the glove compartment? Right. And you wouldn't have believed him if he said that, no matter how he said it. No, it's lame. And you consider yourself an unprejudiced person? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so what are you driving at? No, I'm just taking you at your word. You're an open, broad-minded person, correct? Yeah. OK, let's pretend for a moment that Williams really didn't know how the gun got there. Let's just pretend. Now, you're his attorney. Would you let him testify to that effect, knowing that a reasonable, open-minded person like yourself wouldn't buy it no matter what he said? knowing that if William stumbles on the stand, it could seal his fate? No, I still say it. An innocent man speaks up for himself. Indeed, sir, your sophistry can't explain away the facts. Williams is a gang member, a common thug. Williams told others that Rivera should die. He had no verifiable alibi for the night of the murder. An eyewitness described him at the scene. The police found the murder weapon in his car. Case closed. How can you argue with that? Start with the gun. You mean the murder weapon. Ballistics prove it was the gun that killed Rivera. So why does Williams keep it? First rule of the street, get rid of the murder weapon. Even OJ knew that. That was a knife. <laughs> Knives are cheap. Guns are cheap. Especially when the cost of hanging on to one can be your life. So the guy's a moron. I don't think your typical gang member's exactly a PhD. Williams has survived on the streets. 
He became a lieutenant in a top gang with only one prior conviction for assault when he was 18. Now that takes a different kind of smart. You sound like you admire him. I'm just saying if you buy the prosecution's case, you have to believe that Williams was smart enough to wipe any prints off the gun, but dumb enough to put it in his glove compartment. Maybe he was wearing gloves. Maybe there were no prints to wipe off. We didn't hear any testimony about gloves. Whose side are you on? We've been instructed to consider only the evidence that's been presented. They did find the leather jacket and the watch cap. That's right. Williams was wearing them when they picked them up. Yes, but we heard no forensic evidence about powder residue on either item. So? So firing a gun 13 times at close range should at least leave a trace. How do you know? I watch television. The eyewitness said the man wore a leather jacket and a watch cap. Yeah, explain that. Well, I could walk out this evening and find 25 young men wearing the same thing. Mm -hmm. And the eyewitness was a 60-year-old woman in a second-story window who only looked out as a man fled the scene, and she couldn't pick Williams out of a lineup. That's true. Come on, what are the odds? I'm changing my vote. What? That's my right, for God's sake. I think we should take another vote. Any objections? Let's do it by show of hands this time. Guilty? Not guilty. Eight to four to convict. Now what do we do? We keep talking. OK, listen up, everybody. Here's what we got. Muhammad Khalid al-Yemeni, 25 years old, born in Aden, Yemen, oldest of five children, two brothers, two sisters, accepted by Middle Virginia University in 1998, sponsored on an F-1 visa by his aunt and uncle, came in in August of 1998. His declared major was electrical engineering. He had a B-plus average his first year, partial classes his second year, and then he dropped out. Since last September, he's been driving a cab. No record of him leaving the country. It's not much. TikTok, work your sources. We need more. A lot more. Yeah. Well, Muhammad was a good boy, a good nephew. He was going to be an electrical engineer like me. He would get a job, study, bring his brothers and sisters over. Muhammad really dug the freedom here. We partied together, uh, had study group together. Then his father died and things got Weird. His father died? Sophomore year. How? Bus accident. Mama didn't have enough money to go home for the funeral. He stayed here? We offered him a plane ticket. But he knew if he took it, he wouldn't have the money to come back. It's very sad. Muhammad loved his father. He didn't have a job? He worked at the student bookstore, but it didn't pay much. When his father died, he started bartending off campus. But then he had a hard time keeping up with class. Uh, then the school found out about his bartending gig. Wait, is that a problem? Well, kids with student visas have to work on campus. He met with the dean and agreed to withdraw, temporarily, I thought. But he never came back. He was not an observant Muslim when he came to the mosque. He was grieving, uh, angry lost, looking for answers. So we began to talk about Islam. Muhammad really wanted to be a good Muslim. He gave up alcohol. He attended prayers. I was impressed. As Muslims, we are taught to look after our brothers and sisters. When you hired him to drive a cab, Mr. Abana, did you check his visa? He told me he was a student. Boys like Muhammad need a break. After 9-11, who would hire an Arab to do anything in this country now? He's a good boy, good driver, employee of the month. But then he met Rashid, and things became not so nice. OK, who's, who's Rashid? A troublemaker. True Islam does not advocate violence against the innocent. I banned him from the mosque. Muhammad began to scold us. He said, you mix with unbelievers. You have forgotten what it is to be Muslim. He ordered me to cover my head at all times. I said, you do not tell me what to do. That is between me and God. He said, unbelievers are killing our brothers and sisters. He said, 
America and Israel are Satan. He said, I didn't know the true meaning of jihad. We kicked them out. I said goodbye. I lost them. Rashid Ahmed. He comes to Richmond in winter, 2000. Begins visiting local mosques. Picking out possible converts to his own twisted idea of Islam. He's recruiting, but who for? Who is he? Where is he? One, motive. Williams' gang, the Ninth Street Boys, are in a territorial dispute with the Latin lords run by Carlos Rivera. Williams tells his boss Rivera has to go. Kill the head and the body dies. Those are his words. Supposedly. His boss testified to that. So? People, Williams' boss doesn't want open warfare with the Latin lords. He says no to the hit on Rivera. Williams is ambitious. He goes ahead with the hit anyway. Motive is personal and professional. Get rid of a rival, get points within the gang. May I? You'll get your turn. Two, means. I think it's fair to assume Williams is familiar with guns. All thugs are. The murder weapon was stolen three years ago from a Roanoke household. Perfectly plausible to believe it found its way into Williams' hands. One thing we know for certain, the police found it the next day in the glove compartment of his car. Ballistics matched the gun to the murder, no question. None. Three, opportunity. Williams can't account for where he was at 2 o'clock AM, time of the murder. We know he was at a party that night until 1, and then went home, supposedly, watched TV till he fell asleep. But the next day, he can't tell the police what he watched. An eyewitness to the shooting described... The aftermath of the shooting. I stand corrected. An eyewitness to the aftermath of the shooting describes a black man wearing a leather jacket and a watch cap running to a nearby car, gets into the car, and drives away. When the police apprehend Williams the next day, he is wearing a leather jacket and a watch cap. Motive, means, opportunity, add it up. There's only one answer. Williams shot Carlos Rivera. I'm changing my vote. What's up? Our analysts know the guy who recruited Al Yemeni at the mosque. Rashid Ahmed, AKA Mukhtar Ahmed, Ahmed Rashid, Saudi National. President of the Al Training Complex in 98 and again in 2000. Currently believed to be in Pakistan. Al Yemeni was recruited by a member of Al Qaeda. <sighs> Squad One just executed the warrant on Al Yemeni's residence. Look what they got. It's a map of downtown Richmond. Check out what's circled St. John's Episcopal Church, Edgar Allan Poe Museum, and Capitol Square. We gotta evacuate those sites. Do full sweeps. I made a cover story. I'll handle it. We could be sitting on a time bomb. This is hopeless. Let's tell the judge we're a hung jury and get out of here. I think we should keep talking. Why? Those three are never going to change their votes. Maybe we ain't the ones who ought to change. I wish yeah. the defense had done a better job. I wish he talked like you. Well, you get what you pay for. Oh, please, don't blame this on the system. I just laid it out for you in black and white. The man is guilty of sin. I disagree. How can you disagree? I told you, I think the government failed to make a compelling case. Don't bother arguing with him. I know these people, they're very clever. They can twist anything. Excuse me, what people would that be? You know, one of those bleeding heart liberals who can't bear to send any minority away. Liberal? Is that what you meant? Of course, what else? Is that what he meant? He meant Jew. Uh, nonsense. He didn't say that. That's right. You people are so sensitive. Which people? The black people in this room? The yellow people? The people with big noses, brown hair? Which? I don't have to listen to this. I am being accused of something I did not say. Honey, nobody's accusing you of anything. Why don't you just sit down and shut up? You know what I meant. Let's take a five-minute break. The world changed September 11th, Mohammed. You know it. I know it. 
Because of that, we need to sort through various parts of your life to get at the truth. You understand that? Yes. Good. I'm going to ask you a few questions. Just give me your honest answers, okay? You like living in this country? Yes. What do you like about it? The food? The women? Yes. Me too. Mohammed, you want to protect this country, don't you? Good. Okay. Mohammed, are you a terrorist? No. Do you support terrorism? No. Have you planted any bombs in downtown Richmond? No. So you're telling me the truth now? You ever been to Afghanistan? No. Have you ever visited any terrorist training camps? No. Do you know Rashid Ahmed? No. OK. That's it. Easy, right? We have an expression around here. Trust, but verify. You've given me your honest answers, but we want to be sure of them so we can put this matter to rest once and for all, OK? What I'd like to do now is give you a polygraph test. You know what that is? Lie detector. Right. Just something that we do to let people know that you're telling the truth. Once you pass, it should remove any cloud that you have hanging over you. And America will be a safer place. You cool with that? Look, uh, if you want to go over things again, um, I'm willing to listen. I think we all are. All right. Motive. Rivera's gang, the Latin Lords, was selling crack on the Ninth Street Boys turf without paying tribute. So the Ninth Street Boys had an institutional motive to take out Rivera. Now, Williams made this point repeatedly to his peers, but his boss feared retribution and refused to act. So the question then becomes, did Williams have a personal reason to take out Rivera? Sure, so he'd rise in the gang. And did he? No, because he was caught. We'll get to that, but you rise in a criminal organization by being a good soldier, not by disobeying orders. Disobedience threatens the enterprise. And unless you have your troops lined up for a coup, you do not make an assault on the throne, either directly or indirectly. You sound like an authority. Not me. Machiavelli. Now, we heard from three gang members, the leader, Johnny Jefferson, and two lieutenants. But did anyone testify that Williams had approached other gang members about getting rid of Jefferson and taking his place? No. Did anyone testify that Williams told anyone that he shot Rivera? No, sir. Well, doesn't that strike you as strange? Wouldn't you tell someone? Wouldn't you be bragging about it? Maybe. In fact, if Williams really wanted to take over the Ninth Street Boys, he had two choices, to hit Jefferson or to wait. 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 Wait for the problem with the Latin Lords to get worse. Then everyone would realize that Williams was right and Jefferson was wrong, and Jefferson would have to go. One way or the other. By acting as the prosecution says he did, Williams risked everything, and he's too smart for that. All right, means we've been over the gun. It makes no sense to hang on to it. So how did it end up in the glove compartment? Someone else put it there. Oh, let me finish. Opportunity. Williams' alibi stinks. And that's the point. How come he doesn't have a better story? He got drunk and went home? If Williams killed Rivera, don't you think he'd at least remember what television he watched? So what's your explanation? If Williams didn't kill him, who did? That's not our responsibility. We're asked only to consider if the prosecution has made its case beyond a reasonable doubt. That sucks. I want to know who did it. At least we should have an alternative theory of the case. I think we can figure one out. Are the lights on in this room? Yes. 
Do you support terrorism? No. Have you ever been to Afghanistan? No. Have you planted any bombs in the Richmond area? No. Are you sitting down? Yes. Have you ever been to a terrorist training camp? No. Ma'am. Yeah. Can I have a moment, please? Sure. What's up? I was wondering if I could observe the interrogation. I understand your reasons for keeping me off the case, but I feel it's like fine. it's a... It's fine. Come on. You set? Let's do it. That's right. How you doing? You okay? You lied to me, buddy. About Afghanistan, a few other things. Look, I don't blame you for what you did. You had good reasons, right? And what did you do exactly? You haven't hurt anyone. You let your visa expire, you went to a training camp, if that's all we're talking about, then you're looking pretty good. But I can't help you unless you come clean. You got it? Do you recognize him? Do you recognize him? My father. How about this guy? No. My father. Mustafa Abdel Noor, Syrian. My name's Emil MacArthur. Pretty strange, huh? My father was ashamed of being Arab, so when he had me, he changed my name to MacArthur. Like I was fooling anybody, huh? With the skin, forget it. Then he died, and I grew up not really knowing who I was. Got into a lot of trouble, a lot of fights. Classic case. I'm in front of the court, age 18. Judge gives me two options, jail or the military, so... I joined the Navy, saved my life. I don't think our stories are really that different. I think it's maybe just an accident of fate that you're on that side of the table and I'm on this side. After your father died, you were sinking into a hole that just got deeper and deeper. But you didn't beat up people or break into houses like I did. You went to the mosque, good move, smart. But then what happened? See. I got lucky. I got the Navy. You, you got Al-Qaeda. But I understand that because just like me in the Navy, suddenly you had a structure. You had a purpose in life. You had friends. Rashid Ahmed flew you to Pakistan. Took you to Afghanistan. Was it the six-week program or the ten? I'm guessing six. Went through basic training, learned to shoot, worked with explosives, RPGs, all the good stuff. Re-entered the country through Mexico, I'll bet. And then 9-11 happens. Suddenly it's all too real. Your friends are killers. 3,000 innocent people dead, over 300 of them Muslims, gone. Like that. But you're not a killer, are you, Muhammad? You're not really a terrorist. You were confused. Looking for answers, and you ended up in a bad place. Am I right? But what about the map, Muhammad? That's what bothers me. You have a map of Richmond with a number of targets circled. <laughs> No, no, not targets. I'm a taxi driver. I did not know Richmond. When I get work, 
Mr. Albana, he circled the important places on the map, told me I should memorize them. He'll back you up on that? Yes, yes, absolutely. I swear. Okay. But what about the rest of this? We need to get this resolved. Today. Rashid. He will kill my family. That's not true. We'll protect them. And you, Muhammad. But I need the truth. You lied to me before, didn't you? Yes. You've been to Afghanistan. Yes. You were trained by Al-Qaeda. Yes. But I did not do anything. I swear to Allah. We got him. You know who did it. I know only what you do. The facts. And facts are stupid things. They can't speak for themselves. What do you mean? Well, take the same facts and rearrange them in your mind. Now, who benefited from the death of Carlos Rivera? Kenny Williams? Mm-mm. His ass is in jail. Well put, Sylvia. Thank you. Who else is there? Well, there's someone who had two serious problems the day that Rivera died. And when that day was over, he had none. Johnny Jefferson. Rivera was moving in on his territory. Williams was a threat to take over his gang. And by wiping out Rivera and pinning it on Williams, he gets rid of a rival and avoids repercussion from the Latin lords. How's that? Well, because he makes it clear to the Latin lords that, that Williams was acting on his own. A wild man. Very shrewd. Excuse me, I don't want to rain on anyone's parade, but there's a little thing called evidence. Well, let's talk about that. Now, how did the police get onto Kenny Williams on the day of the murder? The eyewitness description. No, they got a tip. A phone call. That's right. The police got a phone call. Who made the phone call? I don't remember. You don't remember? You don't remember because we don't know. And the prosecution doesn't know either. An anonymous informant called the police and said, Kenny Williams shot Carlos Rivera. It's weird. Now, Kenny Williams is a known character to the police. They have been dying to pin something on him. So they pull him over, they do a cursory search, and guess what? They win the lottery. They find the murder weapon and the clothes that match the eyewitness description. Sometimes it happens that way. You're going to punish the police for being lucky? We're just examining facts. And here's another one. Where was Rivera when he was shot? Who was he visiting? A girlfriend. Who was she? She'd met him at a party a few weeks before. She was a hottie. Was she black or Hispanic? She Hard to tell. to me. Yeah. In fact, we don't know much about her at all, except that Rivera spent his last hours on Earth in her bed. Oh, and we know something else. We know where she lived, where the shootings occurred. Now, was that Ninth Street or Latin Lord's territory? I think it was on Hollingsworth, right? It's Ninth Street territory. It's right over the border. Correct. Now, gang leaders usually travel with protection, and they tend to avoid enemy turf, but they're only human after all. And if Rivera was stepping out with a Ninth Street girl, he would do it alone and unprotected. Jezebel! Who? It was a setup. We don't know that. No, we don't. We don't. Just as we don't know for certain how the gun got in the car, or what Williams was doing at the time of the murder, or what Jefferson was doing at the time of the murder. After all, who testified that Williams was partying that night? It was Jefferson. Isn't it possible that Jefferson made sure that Williams got drunk, that Jefferson made sure that Williams went home alone with no alibi? And where was Jefferson that night? We know he was at the party, but where did he go next? What did he do? We don't know. No, we don't. We don't. All we have are a few facts and some stories to explain them. I'm ready to vote. Oh, hey, Emil, listen, I just, I saw your interrogation. It was amazing. Thanks. 
I, I didn't know you were Navy. I'm not. Uh, I went to college right out of high school. Wrestling scholarship. But what about that other stuff, then? Some of it's true. The AG would like to put in a press release tonight in time for the network lead. Naturally, we'll keep details to a minimum. We don't want to prosecute. What? Not if we can help it. Are you crazy? This isn't about law enforcement, Gwen. It's about intelligence. We've got to think about the mission, David. Look, we have a rare opportunity here. If we can flip out Yemeni and send him back home, we have a native intelligence source right in the enemy camp. You know how valuable this is? That's a big if. We can nail him right now for material support of a terrorist organization. Uh, Yemeni's no threat to you us. You don't know that. Come on, you saw the guy. Look, I've already alerted the director. He is with the president right now, along with the attorney general, DCI, and Homeland Security. Obviously, they make the final decision, but I have given my strong recommendation. David, let us work with this guy. Eleven not guilty, one guilty. You still believe Williams did it? The evidence points in one direction and one direction only. Williams shot him, ran to a car, and drove away. Great. We're deadlocked. Excuse me. Yes? Do we have a chart of the street? It's right over here. This is a one-way street, correct? Yes, it is. The arrow. I think there was more than one person involved. What is this, Charlie Chan time? Oh. You know, you ought to shut your mouth before somebody shuts it for you. It's OK. I'm Korean, not Chinese. And you are a piece of crap. <laughs> Can we keep this under control, please? Yes, I want to hear what she has to say. The eyewitness said that the shooter ran to the car and opened the door so violently that it banged against the lamppost. That's right. She said she could hear the impact. Well, look, one-way street, the car is parked facing this way, and the lamppost is here. The man got in on the passenger side, not the driver's side. Someone else was driving. Very good. Nobody said Williams had an accomplice. This case was all based upon his acting alone, isn't that so? Yes? What's your vote now? Not guilty. I am tired. I know. It's been a long day, but it's almost over. Look at me. I can help you. Mohammed, look at me. I'm being straight with you. I can make your problems disappear, put you back in school, make sure you get a decent start at life. It's a nice ring. Family heirloom? Yes. Your father's? Yes. I can relocate your family, Muhammad. Get your mother, your brother and sisters over here. It'd be nice, wouldn't it? Yes. Make your father's dreams come true. Be the man of the family like you wanted. How? You leave the country under what's known as voluntary deportation. As far as anyone knows, you were caught with an expired visa. That's it. No charges. You simply choose to go back to Yemen. What must I do? At first, just be yourself. Eventually, we want you to go back to Al-Qaeda. <laughs> you want me to spy on Al-Qaeda? We'll teach you how to protect yourself, how to communicate, avoid detection. But yeah, from now on, you work for us. You do a good job, come back to the United States, resettle your family, start over. But if you go back on your word, 
We have ways to deal with that, too. Mohammed, you hold the key to your freedom. There are plenty of people outside this door that want to lock you away. What I'm giving you is a chance to protect America, the country that took you in, to practice the true meaning of Islam, which protects the innocent, to make your family proud. Your choice. Forgot my book. My coat. Well, I uh, guess I'll see you around, huh? Yes. Listen, um, what is it that you do for a living anyway? Oh, I, uh, I sell paper products. It's very boring. Oh. Well, you should be a politician. I'd vote for you. Thank you. <laughs> told me that we're letting him walk. Not exactly. We're going to train him extensively before we put him in place. Gwen says he should be in jail. What do you think? Right here. The question you have to ask yourself is this. Is the country safer prosecuting him? Will it actually stop the next attack? We're rolling the dice. Yeah. That's the game we're in now.